Welcome again to WPDailyFix.com. It's Ben here again, and I'm bringing you the last video in our Paragrams uh, Catalyst Rebuild. So let's jump straight into our site. And here it is where we left it. Uh, everything is, uh, is coming together nicely. This last video, we're going to do um, all the little styling bits and pieces to bring this together really nicely. What I tend to like to do at this stage is to work from the top down just to make sure nothing's missed. So we're going to start up in this uh, header right area. Let's get this top section and the menu all uh, sorted out. So to do that, um, I'm going to jump back into the WordPress dashboard, go into widgets. Here you can see, just to hold the space earlier uh, in the header top right custom area, I put in a text widget which said uh, search and social. Uh, I'm actually going to put a real search box in there. Let's plonk that one in. Uh, we'll leave the title blank. And in the text area here, I'm just going to drop in uh, a widget, uh, sorry, just going to drop in some social buttons, which I've got uh, sitting as an image. I'm working multiple tabs again uh, in this dynamic image uploader. Here it is. Just copy the address straight out of there. Shut that so we don't get confused. Okay, let's go and have a quick look. There's a little tiny bit of work still to do there, but um, here we have it. So we've got some nice little social buttons. Here's our little search area. You can see it's right off to one side. We want to get that sorted out. If we go into dynamic, and there's a great section here just for styling the search box. In the bottom row, search. I'm going to hop down. I want to make the width about 270 is going to work. Uh, the form padding top will be 17 pixels, the bottom around 16. We'll save that. Refresh the front end. And there we go. We've got some nice little social buttons and a search area. Uh, similar again to, uh, to what is here in the original site. I obviously took the liberty of uh, pasting all these into one little uh, image, but of course if you want them uh, to work functionally, you'll drop them in as individual images or even use a widget that will uh, throw those in there for you. Let's do the nav bar now. So again in dynamic options, we're going to go to nav bar 1. And uh, first thing, let's make this black. So I'm going to change the main background. And that's going to become our accent color. I'm going to save that. Let's have a quick look in the front end. Little change, have a look, little change, have a look. And that way if we make mistakes, it's much easier to undo it. Uh, I left the text color as black, so interestingly, we won't actually see those. There we go. We've got a bit of a hover color there. Back in, we're going to make these colors. Uh, the hover color can stay dark. The inactive color will be white, and the active color will be white as well. Now we're just going to hop on down. Uh, we're going to go individual page border. Let's change these over, just trying to keep a little bit of uh, consistency with the rest of um, the greys I'm using. And individual page border, we'll put one pixel on the right hand side. Last thing to do here is uh, top and bottom padding, just to give us the height and the depth that we need. We'll go to 18 pixels. Save and refresh. And there we go. A nice little uh, simple menu, similar in style to what's here. 
but uh, we've got our own rollover color, only one page in there at the moment, of course. And uh, for ease at this stage, I've just kept this right border going uh, full span top to bottom and having the rollover color uh, cover that whole area. Um, let's keep on moving down. This is gonna get exciting now. We're gonna move into this columns area and this will come together very quickly. First thing I wanna do is to go across into dynamic um, and in the easy widget section where we built that three column area, we're just going to um, take all of this wrap padding out of here. You'll see why in a minute, it'll all, uh, it'll all start to come together with little changes. So I'm gonna save that. What that'll do at this stage is uh, bring everything over a little bit to the left up a little bit higher, but we're now gonna repad that out how we want it with a little bit of custom CSS. Okay, so let's open up the builder now. Okay, I'm gonna paste in one little uh, snippet at a time and we'll just have a look at what they do. And that's the beauty of working in a live editor like this. You can just see it all happen. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is put in our hover background. So I'll just paste that in there, and you can see now when we hover over, we've got a hover background color coming up, which uh, is what we want from the original. Doesn't look quite right yet, but uh, that's a step in the right direction. I'm gonna pop this one out and click Insert into Editor. So that one's in there, we'll save that as we go. Two snippets to go in this time. Uh, we'll paste these in. Let me just uh, hide this out of the way. We'll paste these in. Uh, what we've done here is we've um, bought some padding in around the areas we're working and just had a little play with the widths. You can see we're getting a little closer again. I'm gonna add these into our editor and they've just pasted in there, save those. And the next one here to give us uh, the spacing that we're looking for uh, around the content it's just a little one here, easy home container wrap, excerpt widget. So we're saying find all the excerpt widgets in the easy home container wrap and add 15 pad, uh, pixels of padding all the way around. And you can see now this is uh, starting to look like it should, more so anyway. I'll send this one down into the CSS document and save. Last one we want to do here, uh, in the original site, there's little lines that sit underneath to separate the top row from the bottom row. There they go in there. You see I've just identified the excerpt widgets themselves by their ID and then added a bottom border, pixel, uh, bottom border <laughs> which is one pixel. Let's send that in and save the changes. I'm just gonna refresh the screen here, which I do from time to time, just to make sure everything's sticking nicely. And just one thing uh, we have to finish off here, you'll notice we've still got a border and some padding around our images, uh, which is also throwing off some of the widths there. So I'm gonna go into dynamic options, into content, gonna hop down into thumbnail images so the background here for those will make them transparent thumbnail image border will make a thickness of zero to take that out all together and padding zero as well back into the front end we'll refresh it again and there you go that all spaces out really quite nicely so we've got plenty of room around, the hover colors are working. Uh, we've got our little underlines underneath. You'll notice these are staggered here per the original design. Uh, so if we have a really long one and a really short one, uh, that will sort of fit up nicely. Um, the underline at the bottom here will meet in here. We just need to make a quick uh, adjustment. And that is to slip in one more little bit of custom CSS. I'm gonna put this one straight into the live document this time. Uh, we could work in the holding area or not. 
and you'll see here we've got easy home top container margin bottom zero pixels and that has brought this down neatly there just before I save that I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit I'm not so much going to organize it there's only such a tiny bit of code for this side I'm not going to uh, label things but I just want to uh, bring them all a line apart they're a lot easier a lot faster to look through that way there we go and that's a lot easier to look through uh, when we're doing our edits you can see I'll um, make this box a little bigger that is the sum total of all the custom CSS um, in this build so there's really not a lot there at all uh, it's all provided for you if you want to do some cut and pasting or do some experimenting with your own um, obviously uh, you know, I've spent a little bit of time working through exactly what I'm going to code here and I've, I've put that in um, to get the exact effect that I want. Um, and uh, you can do the same. You can use Eric's amazing uh, custom CSS builder up the top here and build it that way if you like too, uh, which I still use quite a bit. I think it's a great tool. I'm just going to click save to make sure we've done that. Now let's hide the builder away. You can see uh, where the site's at now, looking really good. We're going to do a little bit of work here in the footer area, and that'll finish off the bottom of the page. I'm going to go uh, back across into Catalyst. Now, just something, a little technique um, that you may or may not have picked up on. If we have a look in core options, where we often build our footer content, uh, you see we've got these great little short codes here that are quite handy to use. Well, in fact, these don't only operate in this spot here. We can use them uh, pretty much anywhere throughout our site to bring those content in. So you see we've got WP Login, we've got the Catalyst Attribute, uh, and we've got the little copyright one here. I'm going to uh, cut these out and just paste them across in my little uh, paste pad I've got sitting on the side here. I'm going to save that. <clears throat> and you'll see back in the front end, basically we've removed the content out of this bottom footer area. That's gone now. I want to pop it into my widgetized area here because I just find it a little bit easier to operate. Uh, it styles nicely um, and we can throw other widgets in if we need to to build up that content really easily. So uh, what we're going to do to do that, first of all in dynamic options, I'm just going to change the layout. We picked, uh, if we have a look, um, where are we here? Easy Fat Footer 4. I'm going to change that to Easy Fat Footer Wide Left 2, just for something a little bit interesting. Now, refresh to have a quick look. You can see what we've done. We've gone from a four widget area across the bottom to a two widget area, one on the left and one on the right. Now if we go into appearance and widgets, we're just going to uh, build our little bit of content in there. So now we've got easy fat footer one, which is the left area, and easy fat footer two, which is the right area. In easy fat footer one, just going to drop in a text widget and paste in the short code for login. In Easy Fat Footer 2, again, I'll paste in a widget. Sorry, drop in a widget. And I've pasted in the copyright shortcode. And we'll put in the Catalyst Attribute shortcode as well. Refresh in the front end and we'll see the effect of that. You can see our short codes have bought that nice footer content into our fat footer area, into the widgetized area, as I said. Now, just tiny little bit of styling here to do to clean this up. I'm going to go back into dynamic options. First of all, in footer, uh, the way I've got it set up, that fat footer sits within the footer. Uh, so some of the styling from this footer area here carries across. Footer background. Uh, rather than a color or sticking white, I'm just going to make that transparent. And let's go bottom padding zero pixels. One more thing to do there, I just noticed, sorry. Uh, let's take out the... No, we'll leave the footer border in. I think we need that. Uh, let's go into the easy footer section. 
And uh, just so that we don't carry uh, a background in from here, which will be sitting over the top, we're going to make that one transparent as well. Uh, we just need to take out the bottom border. There we go. That is a really lovely, clean looking footer, which goes with this sort of very uh, stylish, stylish uh, minimalist theme. Um, we'll see it's something quite similar to uh, to the original design, but unique enough that I think we've done our own thing with it. Um, now, look, last thing of all, just going to come back up to the top and just make a little change here. Let's just make this uh, heading really pop to finish off the site. Back in dynamic options, we want to edit in the header, so we're going to go into header. Okay, so the header title font, let's change that to something a little bit fancy. Going to go for Oswald, which is one I've used a few times. Uh, let's pump the size up. Make that 45. And uh, just to do a tiny bit more with it, we could work in the front end builder, but in this case, we're just going to um, flick out this little custom CSS box and uh, work directly in here. little bit of padding to sit underneath and we'll transform that to uppercase. And there you have it, uh, a nice heading to uh, finish off uh, the design. So um, look, I think this has come together really nicely. Uh, it's a very minimal theme uh, based on the Paragrams theme. Uh, we've made it a little bit unique. We could obviously go a lot further with styling. Um, we've got our inner page layout, uh, which still works lovely, and we'll carry a lot of this across. That's looking really good. So look, I hope you've enjoyed this series of three videos. Uh, if this isn't a build specifically for you, hopefully it's something uh, in which you've been able to see a whole lot of different techniques used. Uh, and you'll see how friendly um, the Catalyst and the dynamic environment is and what can be done with uh, very minimal coding. You know, we probably could have built something really similar without any custom CSS at all. Um, but, but it sometimes does take a little bit just to get the exact styling uh, when a client has very specific uh, requirements. Thanks for joining me again at WPDailyFix.com. Uh, this has been Ben Pyman. I've uh, really enjoyed this short series and I hope to talk to you all again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.